Hello and welcome to our first virtual service. We're glad you're joining us today. Please make sure that uh, we know you're here. There's a chat at the bottom of the page that lets us know you can interact with us. We'll interact with you. Um, also, uh, please uh, don't forget you know, we're still functioning as a church, so please continue giving as you have in the past um, so we can still keep continuing to bless people and bless this community. Um, we're glad you're here this morning. Uh, we're glad you're with us. Um, this is something new, something different, but we hope that it's something that keeps you connected to our body in Christ, that keeps you, uh, at least for now, until we come back together again, fulfilled, uh, and letting you know that we are not forgetting you. Um, we want to make sure that we continue to sustain you spiritually um, with songs of praise and with good, solid biblical teaching. Uh, so with that, let's go to God in, in praise. Uh, however you're dressed, how, whatever you're doing, just pause and just join us as we praise the Lord today.
Well, hello again, and I hope, I pray that everyone is staying safe and healthy out there. Please continue to pray. Pray for our nation, pray for the world, uh, as we, uh, and the leadership here as we just go through these uh, unprecedented times, and um, let us continue to trust in God for our peace, for our hope, um, and just, these are strange times. Uh, we want to make sure that we are still coming together, uh, even if we only do it uh, online, uh, through virtual church. Uh, I believe that also that the saying people are using now, it, it's wrong. We want to practice, um, we don't want to practice social distancing. We want to practice physical distancing, but we want to remain socially connected. Uh, so please, please practice social distan distancing while we remain socially connected. Uh, I'm sorry, practice physical distancing while we remain socially connected. Uh, take advantage of Facebook, Messenger, email, Skype, uh, whatever social media you use. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Send a letter, too, through the mail. Um, but just whatever we can to make sure that we stay connected to one another. Uh, and remember, please remember, in times like this, it's not for the church to just survive. You know, we don't want to just put our heads in the sand and then come up when everything is fine. We expect the church in these times to thrive. It's times like these we have special opportunities to share our love and our hope with others. So yes, we want you to be smart, you know, cough and sneeze in your hand and wash your hands and all those things like that. But we also want you to live a life that's radical and courageous, like Jesus did. Pray for ways to share your hope and God's grace. Uh, God has given us an amazing opportunity in this time. Let's not waste it by trying to hide. So with, with, with all of that we have, let's jump into today's message. We are continuing our sermon series in short and sweet, Big Wisdom from Little Letters. Our scripture is Jude, uh, verse 17 through 23. There's only one chapter in Jude, so... Chapter 1, 17 through, 17 through 23. And I'm reading from the NIV translation, and here's what it says. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, 
who follow mere inst natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to reach out over the internet and satellites and however else we're reaching people. Um, that we're able to stay connected uh, through your word and, and through uh, these messages, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you would uh, just bless us, the leadership of this church. Bless the members and the attenders of this church, Heavenly Father, as we go through these new waters. Lord, I ask that as we speak your word today, you would open up ears so people would hear. Open up hearts so we would love more. And Lord, give us focus. Give us an understanding of what we are to be as your people. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. Today's sermon title, for those of you who are taking notes or like these types of things to kind of, you know, bookmark these things, I would say it's this, in times like these. And although this is an unusual time, I'm not referring to the coronavirus. Uh, the times we are living in, um, it, it, it hasn't changed much from Jews' time. And that's what I'm referring to in times like these, the days that the church in Jews' day that was facing, uh, the times we were living in, the times Jude was living in, a lot of it is the same. The, the stuff happening when Jude wrote the letter, that's happening today. They had false teachers and preachers in God's church then. We have false teachers and preachers in God's church now. They had Christians who claimed Jesus Christ as Savior but lived ungodly lives then. We have Christians today who claim Jesus Christ as Savior but live ungodly lives now. Judah's warning us about these pseudo-preachers and false teachers, these leaders who were then trying to sway folks to ungodly lifestyles, ungodly ways of thinking and acting, those who preyed on the helpless and the hopeless, those who took advantage of their power to act in ungodly ways, especially when it comes to feeding their own physical pleasures, especially sexual misconduct. These are the teachers and preachers Judah is referring to then and is referring to them now. Judah in this letter, this little letter brings us wisdom on what to expect and what to do in times like these. First, Jude says there is nothing new. It's all been foretold. This is my first point. We were told this would happen. Verses 17 and 18. Jude begins this section by saying, remember what the apostles of Jesus Christ told us. They told you, they said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who follow their own ungodly desires. In the last times. A lot has been made about that statement, in the last times. What are, when are the last times? We are living in them. They were living in them. The last times are the time period before Jesus Christ returns. These are the last times because when Jesus returns, there will be no more time. Remember first before there was in the beginning? Well, that was a period. Next was in the beginning, when God said, let there be, and everything that was created was created. When time began to move. When humanity messed things up and caused decay, death, and ruin to enter into creation. Otherwise, we call it when they sinned, when they fell. But rather than destroy his creation, God made a way to take back or redeem his creation, including us humans. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the timeline. Jesus entered the timeline where he lived and was crucified and rose again. The event we celebrate as Easter or Resurrection Sunday. He rose from the dead and then he went back to his father. From that time when he went back to his father until the time he returns again marks the last times. First hearers. The readers of this letter were living in the last times. 
Paul, Peter, James, John, even Jude, well, they were starting churches and writing letters to those churches to help them to grow and to help them to, to form and be, be who God wanted to be. They were living in the last times. When, uh, when uh, Luther nailed his 95 theses to the church door at Wittenberg, Germany, he was living in the last times. When the Great Awakening was occurring in the early formation of this country, this taking place in this country, that was in the last times. When the Azusa Street Revival were happening in California and spread throughout this world, they were living in the last times. When Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about he, the dream that he had, when he was praying for the soul of the nation, he was living in the last times. And now today, when we have been told, what would it, we have living in a time where we are locked down because this little virus has us pinned down, this country come to a complete halt, we are living in the last times. The last times. We're living in them. What have we been told would occur during this last times? There would be these false teachers, these false leaders who would do wrong in these last times. They were going to follow their own ungodly desires during the last times. We know from previous verses that these false teachers had snuck into, they had infiltrated God's church, and they were, they were doing and being divisive. They were also preying on those and sexual immorality. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to go into detail about the sexual immorality. If you can imagine it, they were doing it. That's what was taking place. Uh, they would prey on the weak, the helpless, and, and hopeless, twisting God's words and his grace while denying Jesus as the only way. They propped themselves up as the Savior. Just come follow me and I will save you. You don't need Jesus. Jesus, yeah, he was one way, but I am also a way. It happened then. It happens today. We've got pastors and teachers telling the weak, the hopeless, those coming for help, that God says, hey, you know what? It's okay to do this. God told us he wants us to be together. He said it's okay. Trust me. You know, it, it, it'll be okay. Just follow me. God wants us to be happy. They have still and use Jesus. They still do. They use it and, and that their influence and their power and authority to abuse people who are the most vulnerable who are coming to God in the church. But also then, like now, they cause divisions in the church. And instead of, of following the Holy Spirit, they follow their natural instincts. Verse 19. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. These people don't even have the Holy Spirit. They are divisive individuals who, instead of, of, of seeking common ground, of trying to come together to, to build, build uh, peaceful solutions for, for, for problems and things, they would rather divide and be uncooperative. They would say things like, I imagine in my own mind, they would say things like, well, not to be the devil's advocate, but, but that's exactly what they were doing, being the devil's advocate. People are always looking at, at why something just won't work. Why, why, this, this is not going to work. That's not going to work. Rather than, hey, maybe this will work. Or, hey, this is how it can work. Divisive. The, the church folks like them, the divisive ones, we, we had them then. Jew was talking about them. We have them today. That spirit of apathy, of pessimism, stubborn, cantankerous, negative, uncooperativeness. It's still alive and well in so many of our churches today. Just like Darth Vader. They're always looking to the dark side. And it sounds harsh what Jude says here, but it's true. They don't have the Holy Spirit. This might be a warning for some of you. I don't believe negativism is a spiritual gift. The gifts of planning, organization, uh, of detailed thinking, all are needed in the church. They're all gifts, but unhelpful, destructive, negative, obstinate, grouchy, irritable, or not. Check your attitude. Make sure you have the Holy Spirit and not some other spirit. Jude, in his wisdom, tells us these folks, they are, they are going to sneak into your church. So what do we do? How do we avoid their traps? What do we do in order to do what God has called us as his church to do? Well, we are to continue to grow spiritually. That's my second point. Continue to grow spiritually. That's verses 20 and 21. Grow closer. Stay in Jesus' love. Verse 20 says that we are supposed to, but you, dear friends, 
by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. See, and you thought Pastor Ryan and I were just talking when we said we need to grow spiritually. It's not something we just say. It, there's a reason we want you to grow. Not only is what we're commanded to do as God's children, but also as a way to combat the negative spirits of division and helps us stand against false teaching when they try to invade our churches. I see two important ways to grow here. First is through God's word. We build ourselves up by reading and studying God's word. You know, the reason Jews' church knew that there would be false prophets because they were told this by the apostles of Jesus Christ. They were told this by Peter, by, by James, by John, by Matthew, by John Mark. They also had some guys from the Old Testament that they had studied. Zechariah, Malachi, Amos, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and many others that they could go back to and read. And they, they had warnings about what was going to happen taking place in times like these. They knew about them and they studied them. They were to use them to build themselves up. We need to use scriptures to build ourselves up. Right now, while you are stuck inside... You have access to video after video to help you grow and mature. Each member of this church has access to Right Now Media. You can use it to help you grow. There are videos and Bible studies there for Christian living, for couples, for children, for families, for, for marriages, for just studying Scripture. There is no reason for not studying and knowing God's Word. We've got public schools that you might not think they're good, but they taught you how to read and write if you just pay attention. You've got Bibles. You've got apps. You've got so many things in order to help you grow spiritually. There's no reason for you not to use it. There's no reason for us not to be growing. We're also supposed to build ourselves up by praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we do that? How do we pray in the Spirit? First, here's what it's not. It's not some type of rolling, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, rolling, going down the aisles, lots of, lot of repetition. Father God, Father God, it's not a lot of, and a, and a, and a, and Lord, it's not, that, that, no, that may be part of your worship culture, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're praying in the Holy Spirit. And it's also not a lot of, of big, eloquent words. Where people can just, wow, they are so eloquent when they pray. That's not praying in the Spirit either. Praying in the Spirit. It's simply the process of praying the will of God. That's all. It's praying for the things that the Holy Spirit is praying for. It's praying for the things God is seeking to see and, and to do his will. It's us praying for others, intercessory prayer. It's thanksgiving prayers for God, to God, for his loving kindness upon us. It's praying that God will use us as he wills and he wants. It's praying the things that Jesus prayed. Remember the 21 days of prayer? praying the king's agenda. We, we learned that, it, that, the, those, that, that it's not about me. It's not about what I want, what I want. It, it's about the king's agenda. It's about what Jesus prayed. It's about what God wants for us. It, it's all about praying the same things that Jesus prayed. It's not praying for power and more control. It's not greedy, selfish prayers for money and material possessions and things. It's prayers to help us do God's will. It's prayers through the Holy Spirit to help us see where Jesus is working, where the Holy Spirit is moving, and then prayers to give us the desire and the will to join Jesus in where he's working, where his plan is being fulfilled, where we can come, become part of that. We can become a part of what Jesus is doing in our communities. That's praying in the Spirit. Are we ready to put our petty desires aside and pray through the Holy Spirit, in the Spirit, to hear from God, to do his will? Do we desire to keep ourselves in God's love. See, if we're going to combat the divisiveness in our churches, if we're going to keep false teachers from, from, from ruining our churches and God's name outside the church and inside the church, we need to follow Jews' instructions and build ourselves up in the Spirit by praying through the Holy Spirit. And that means study and prayer. And the last thing Jude wants us to do is also very important. It's part of this whole following the Holy Spirit. When we do this, it keeps us in God's love as we wait for eternal life, as we wait for our eternal reward. And that eternal reward is not something we deserve, but it's in God's grace and mercy. He's given it to us, and we will receive it as long as we continue to study and pray and stay in the Word, continue to keep with the Holy Spirit. That one thing is so important is to keep reaching out. 
verses 22 and 23. Keep reaching out to God's people. Keep sharing God's word. Jude shares us the importance of God's mercy and his love. We are called, called to show and share the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. We are to be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them away from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Let me read that verse 22 again. Be merciful to those who doubt. In verse 23, save others by snatching them from the fire. To, show, to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Let's take them one at a time. Be merciful to those who doubt. We are to show mercy, show mercy to those who aren't sure what they believe anymore. These might be those who have been hurt by a false teacher in a church, and now they doubt God. They doubt of God's church. If, there's a, if it's truly a place for healing, we need to be patient and show mercy to those people. When they badmouth the church and say bad things, they're not doing it because it's out of hurt and pain. When they talk about being believers, but they don't like the whole institutionalized religion type stuff because they got hurt somehow. Be merciful. Show mercy. We don't need to defend God. We just need to listen and understand and, 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 and listen to their complaints. Listen to their hurts. Show them God's mercy and his love. That's the first group. Others, we need another group. We need to snatch them from the fire. Keep those who, who, who have, are in danger of falling into hell, who have followed these false teachers, and they believe these false teachings. We're supposed to snatch them back, grip, grip them, grab them, help them to see truth, help them to see light, help them keep them from falling into the fire of hell. The third group is a little confusing because we really don't understand the translation. It's, it's kind of confusing for us. It's, there's no real one. But it's, it says to others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. In my own studies, my own conclusion what, that I've come to, what I've come to realize, or what i come to see this as, it's, it's, and you've heard it if you've been part of the church, love the sinner, hate the sin. We are to continue to love Show mercy to those who have fallen away. But we are also told to be careful. Show mercy mixed with fear. Be merciful and understanding, but careful and weary. We can show mercy. We can be forgiving and understanding, but we don't have to follow them into sin. We can love the sinner and hate the sin. I can love the person, but hate what they're doing. I don't have to condone it, like it, or accept it. Wrong is wrong. And we don't have to follow false teachings. To, 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 we, don't, we don't allow them to fester in God's church because when we do allow false teachings and false prophets to fester in God's church, it stops being God's church. We can't allow these false teachers to, and, and sexual sin to gain footholds in the church because if we do, it ceases to be God's church. It becomes a social club at best and a cult or a cesspool of sinful folks just eating each other and, and spitting souls out at worst. At the end of the day, we are called to grow spiritually, grow through following the Holy Spirit in prayer and the study of God's word. We are to be merciful to those who doubt Jesus because of false or abusive teachers. We are to work to save and bring those, those who can, folks, the folks who are in danger, bring them back when you can into God's grace. We are to be merciful yet careful with those who teach falsely. Don't allow it. And finally, let me end with this. We are to be patient. Patient because we know how all this ends. It ends with us in heaven, eternally with Jesus Christ, and those false ones in eternal hell. If we stay true to God's words, if we stay true to the work of the Holy Spirit within us, eternal life with Jesus Christ is our reward. We know that in this life, some will faint and fall away. They'll grow weary. Others will falter and become exhausted. But those who are patient, those who wait upon the Lord, will renew their strength. One day they'll mount up on wings like eagles. One day we will run and not get weary. If we wait upon the Lord, we will walk and not faint. Be patient. Grow in God's love. Stand and resist the devil, and he will flee you. In times like these, pray, study, reach out, 
Be careful and wait. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words this morning. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that it would settle within our hearts, in our minds. It would find fertile ground and it would grow, Father. As, Lord, as we root out the evil within our churches, Lord, as we reach out to those who are doubtful or unsure, Lord, as we grab those who are on the wrong path and we try to turn them back to you, Father, as we, as we are merciful to those who just are on the wrong track. We pray, Father, for your grace, for your mercy, for your courage to speak up when we can, Lord, when we should, when we ought to. Lord, we ask that you would just help us as your people, individually and collectively as your church, to be what you would have us to be, Father, your flock, your sheep, your shepherds, your leaders, Father, as we strive to make a difference wherever we reside, wherever we are, and especially in this community where this church is. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Thank you. Now, as we turn to the praise team, please join us. Again, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just pause and praise along with us. God bless you.
2 Peter 1-2 says, May the grace and peace be yours in abundance, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord.